How do you become a highly paid pro freelance video editor for commercials and documentaries? I mean, where do you even start? It can feel like there are a million different steps that you need to take, but what are they and in what order? In this episode, you'll learn the exact steps that you need to take to become a highly paid remote pro freelance video editor for commercials and documentaries and the exact order you need to do them. So whether you're a self-taught editor or an absolute beginner who wants to go pro, you'll learn exactly where you are in the five stage process and what steps you need to take next. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the video editing podcast from Unsplice. On this show, you'll hear practical tips to help self-taught video editors master industry standard workflow, creative storytelling, and career progression tactics so that you can build a life of freedom as a well-paid remote pro freelance video editor for commercials and documentaries. Let me first tell you about my story, when I first went freelance 15 years ago, I began my freelance journey as a freelance editor. And in my first year, I got no work, pretty much. I got, I think, about three jobs in total. It was really, really hard. I had to sign up for benefits just to survive. But now I work remotely and I choose to work about six months of the year. And I can sit back because work comes to me. Now, you can earn around six figures doing exactly the same. That depends on your location, of course. But I want to run through in this episode the exact steps that I take all of my mentees through because they work. It's proven. We've had editors get work in a couple of weeks. This stuff works. So I'm going to take you from the very beginning how to become a pro freelance video editor if you're starting from scratch with no experience and then you can decide where you slot in the process. So five stages. First stage, build your software skills. It kind of makes sense, right? If you want to become a professional editor, you need to know the software. So first thing you do is learn the software. How long would this take? Eight weeks. Don't spend longer than that because really you just want to like get this done. This is not the biggest hurdle in the process. This is one of the smaller hurdles. Don't fret it. Choose a piece of software. I recommend Premiere Pro if you can afford the subscription because at some point in the future, you'll probably end up working with it anyway, especially if you're going to be working with uh, high-end clients. And uh, if you can't afford that, then just go with DaVinci Resolve because it's free. Case closed, done. Don't think about it anymore. Okay, let's move on. First thing you need to do is find footage to practice with because how are you gonna practice editing if you don't have footage to practice with? So make sure you find footage to practice with. There are places where you can download footage. Um, there is a footage library within Unsplice Pro where you can download a commercial, a documentary, and a promo to practice video editing. Find some practice, some footage to practice with and make sure you get that practice in. Once you've done that, learn the software. This is how you're gonna learn the software. YouTube, there's loads of other free courses out there. It's fine. At some point I'll create a, a Premiere Pro course because so many people have asked for it. But until that day, just you'll find plenty out there online. Then once you've kind of got a handle on the software, you wanna learn technical workflow. That is, what format should all of the assets be in for the smoothest editing experience? Because if you just bring in MP4s and MP3s and um, random JPEGs and you throw them on a timeline, it's going to really slow down your computer. It's going to cause loads of lag. You're going to have you have spend half your time rendering. You're probably going to make it crash. So technical workflow is a must. Learn it at this stage before you pick up loads of bad habits because you're going to have to relearn them all over again. And this will ensure that no matter how big your edit and no matter how far down the process you get, everything still remains running smoothly. Probably works fine if you're just working on, you know, throwing on some random stuff, doing some really small bits. And then all of a sudden 
it'll just start crashing for no reason or slowing down. That's because you haven't practiced technical workflow. Workflow is so important. There's an entire program from Unsplice that covers workflow. So make sure you cover technical workflow. Then you want to learn creative workflow. Creative workflow is the idea of what order should everything be built so that when it comes to making changes further down the line, you can do that efficiently, smoothly, and quickly. That's workflow. The faster you're able to respond to changes, the more you're going to impress the client, the more money you can charge, the more work you can do in less time, everyone wins. So make sure you understand creative workflow because that's going to help you overcome blank timeline syndrome as well. If you're just staring at timeline, you don't know what to create. Creative workflow is the skill that you are lacking. Again, all of that is within the workflow program from Unsplice. Stage two. Now we have built out our software skills. Stage two is about building a focused career path. Focused career path. What does this mean? Firstly, define your specialism because there are so many different types of editing out there. It, you might as well work on stuff that you enjoy doing. If you hate cutting weddings, but a wedding job comes your way, and then all of a sudden your portfolio is full of wedding videos, nobody's going to hire you to cut a documentary on nature. So be cautious at this point to build a portfolio that looks and matches the kind of work that you would like to be working on. So building a focused career path. Define your specialism. That means try out different things. Try cutting a commercial. Try cutting a documentary. Try cutting a promo, a, mu a wedding, a music video, everything that you think that you might like. And then decide what really vibes with you. Spend three weeks on that and no more. Then you want to look into that area, that, that kind of niche, and target high value recurring clients. Notice the word recurring, because that's the key. You don't want to spend half your time reaching out to brand new clients uh, because the type of clients that you are attracting only want to work with you once. There are certain freelance platforms like Upwork and Fiverr. The kind of work you get from there is a kind of a one and done thing. It's not a recurring client. You need to understand where to find those clients. Um, and that is, of course, something that you will find from Unsplice within the career progression program. That is how to define a focused career path. The benefit of that being you don't waste time working on stuff and putting stuff in your portfolio that is not relevant to the kind of work you'd love to do. So really, really important. Stage three, build your portfolio. That's the next thing. We, we're kind of, we're getting there. We're building our presence and making ourselves attractive to clients, to high paying clients. And so now we need something to tempt them to hire us. That is a sexy portfolio. So how are you going to do that? You can either recut an old project. If you've already got, you know, a couple of years of experience, pick up a project that you that you put down a couple of years ago and recut it now, now that you're better. Or alternatively, if you're starting from scratch, download some footage, either from the Unsplice footage library or another resource and practice with that, create a new project with that. And now what you're gonna do is you need to work within this loop. There's three parts to this loop uh, and you need to kind of go through. So the first part is learn a new creative storytelling technique. That is creative storytelling is essentially how good you are at the art of editing. How engaged is your audience when they watch your films? How cool does your edit look? How good is the story? Even if it doesn't have dialogue, there is a story to be told. That is creative storytelling. It's your storytelling, your flow, your pacing, your music editing, all of that. Now, of course, all of that can be learned from the creative storytelling program from Unsplice, but you just want to pick one creative storytelling technique to learn, then edit the video. This is part two of the loop. Then get expert feedback. That's the third part of the loop. And then you go back again, learn a new piece of creative storytelling technique, then use that knowledge to edit the video do another round of feedback, get feedback from an expert and go again. And you're going to do this loop four times. What that means is you're going to get four rounds of changes and that's going to 
make your edit so much better. It's really important that you get expert feedback. Why? Because if you ask your mum, how's my edit? She's going to tell you, it looks lovely, darling. So try and find an expert editor or a mentor that you can get feedback from inside Unsplice Pro. You can post your edits to get feedback on your edit from the community and from myself. Um, so that's something to consider. Make sure you get high quality feedback on the video. That is the loop to make one video. Okay, now you've made one. How many videos do you need in your portfolio? Well, if you're looking to cut documentaries, then three videos is probably a good amount for your portfolio. If you're looking to get into commercials, then four videos is a good base number to put to a client in order to get work. Now you've got those videos, build a portfolio. How are you gonna present it? There are many different ways you can do that. We'll talk about that in another episode, but build your portfolio. Then build the showreel, because now you've got stuff to put in your showreel. That is the build the portfolio stage. Now you have a beautiful portfolio to show to potential clients. Well, now you need to find them. And that is stage four, finding work. Two weeks on this, this is all you need because all you wanna do is just get out there, get comfortable with finding clients, with talking to clients, with having meetings, because this is gonna be an ongoing process until you're happy with the work that's coming in and you're happy with the number of clients that are bringing you work rather than you having to find work. These are the order that you should be thinking about it. The first thing is uh, just have a think and sit and think about your career progression. Where are you going? What are you doing? Who do you wanna work with? And when you reach out to these clients, it's important to think, to sort of overcome those, those mental obstacles, but not think that you don't have the level of experience required for the job. So much of what I see holding editors back is mental. Just make sure that you give yourself some positive thinking and overcome that. Then you need to go find work. Now, if you wanna find work, lucky you, Unsplice has a workshop specifically for this. The workshop is one hour long. It will teach you where to find work, how to get the work, what clients want so that you can impress the client when you actually get a meeting with them and how to acquire those skills that impress the client. If you're interested in that workshop, head to unsplice.com forward slash work. That is a how to find work workshop one hour long and you can find that at unsplice.com forward slash work i've made it really cheap so that anybody can afford it and find work now that you know where to find work how to get it what the clients want and how to acquire those skills you need to reach out to them that is the next skill set build out a, a system to reach out to these clients now that you have the meeting agree the terms that is a contract, how many hours, how much you're gonna get paid. Make sure that you get paid enough. If you don't have a clue how much to charge, join a membership or, sp or speak to an expert. Um, in Unspice Pro, you can ask me how much you should charge and I can help you. So just bear that in mind if you're feeling a little unsure about what you should be charging. Then do the work. I mean, that's kind of obvious, right? Do the work. This is what you've been building up to for so long. Make sure when you do the work, you get expert feedback. Again, in Unspice Pro, you can post your edits to get feedback from me and from the community so that whilst you're working on this client edit, you can actually improve it and get better, better than you thought you could do on your own. What does that mean? You're gonna impress the client and the client is gonna to wanna to work with you again and recommend you to a friend, which means you can put your rate up. It's all cyc cyclical and it's a fantastic way for you to get ahead. Okay, now that you have found the work, you've done the work, it's really important, you know, this is just one job. Stage five is how do you make a living from video editing? You've got one job, but how do you make it a career? That's another thing in its own, right? So maybe you are at this stage already, you've got a bit of work, but you don't currently have ongoing clients, recurring, um, recurring jobs coming your way. Firstly, rates and finances. You need to understand how much to charge, when to put your rate up, how much you should be saving for the tax man, um, and all these other ideas. 
that's the next thing to get your head around. Then how to keep clients happy because a happy client is a recurring client. Then how to have clients come to you. Again, that's a small subset of uh, knowledge that you should have. Then how to build a remote freelance video editing career, because that's half the joy of this job, right? Working as a video editor is the fact that we get to do this remotely. And how do you avoid pigeonholing? That is one of the banes of being an editor. If you are only offered one type of editing and you don't enjoy that editing, well, now you have been pigeonholed. And that is as a result of you saying yes. So you need to learn how to say no and when to balance the different type of budgets and work that comes in and saying yes to some and no to others, which you say yes to and which you say no to. And of course, if you need expert advice with that, then you can ask me with Inside uh, Unspiced Pro. Back to the beginning, if you are starting out as an editor, the first thing that you need to do is define your specialism, which is why you'll want to check out the next episode on defining your specialism.